hello everybody and welcome back to my channel today we are doing a really quick and simple tutorial on how to make one of these stinky little pillows made from one of your pin loom squares this one's an eight inch one and some hessian and that's all you need well you need some fiber fill too really really quick and simple fragranced with essential oils so you can pop them on your pillow and it will make everything smell delicious so what you will need for this little tutorial is a pin loom square um, I've got a couple here I'm going to use this or cream one I used the 8 inch pin loom with the half centimeter spacing and some drops alpaca yarn which is really thick so not what I would normally recommend to use with a um, half centimeter loom but for this particular project I wanted a really nice tight weave which that gives so that's your square I've done a couple one with some hand spun. This one's quite textured, so it looks quite cool. Um, you can also do them on your, if you have a four, four inch loom, and these are little dinky ones that will fit nicely into your drawer to keep your socks smelling nice. Um, so, and that's made with two squares. And these, this one is crocheted together. But we're gonna do the sewn one because it's really, really simple. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do it. So what you need is your square. Um, so sit yourself down in front of the telly and weave yourself some squares and then you can make loads of these in one go. I've cut some hessian, just a piece, normal piece of hessian from an old um, it was actually one of the kids sack, stocking sacks um, from Christmas that I got from the pound shop you need to lay your square onto your hessian leave a nice border around if you want the frayed edge like this one I like the frayed the frayed edge pop that over there um, you can also get some grab some bits and pieces if you want to add some trim um, you may want to also grab yourself some fabric glue um, but they're all additional extras the basics of this are purely your woven square and your piece of hessian so let me get this loom out of the way I am using a crochet cotton because it's really nice and strong um, you can use normal cotton but I would suggest that you double it and so it's nice and strong use embroidery thread um, piece of yarn anything you fancy really um, as long as it's strong you don't want anything that can snap on you so it is as simple as getting your cotton through your needle and I'm going to start at the corner that will have your beginning tail and I just took tuck that underneath and stitch through that and out through the side and then pull that through and of course I've got a ridiculously long piece of thread and then I'm going to literally just tie a cu couple of knots
here we go so now we are here we're going to go back into that same space and pull it through that just gets that on there nice and tight and then we're going to lay it down on our hessian piece and literally find where you're going to go in now this is like a super easy bit because you've got your holes already already there for you so as soon as you've got that first bit in flip it over your squares lay nice and flat and you literally just need to go in as a, with a running stitch all the way along your top bit here so what I do is for you see you can you pull it can pull it away from your hessian and then miss a hole and come through and you can just pull your thread through and then you know that you're going to catch every loop of your weaving or every edge stitch of your weaving there you go and then uh, literally just work yourself way along your hessian now you can either do this from the front and or from the back so you can and you can see that your stitches will run nice and straight because you've got the holes to go through and then if you pull it nice and tight the stitches on this side will actually disappear into your weaving so you won't be able to see them from your woven side so work your way along nice and straightforward through your once you've got a couple of stitches going I think it's easier to lay lay your weaving down and go through from the back because then you know that you're keeping your stitches nice and straight and as long as you're catching your woven piece you'll be golden so let's do a few more then you can see Now obviously you can see the stitches at the back which is why I think it's quite nice to do it from the back so that you can see that you're in a a nice straight straight line and you know that you're not going to see it on the front um, you could do a cross stitch if that be your thing you could make this this side as decorative as you like but I'm going for straightforward and simple because that's kind of me. So just you can just feel with your finger and just make sure that you are catching everything as you go. And if you mess up like I just did, because you're working with the holes in the Hessian you can just pull it straight out almost so in reverse like that because I kind of went through the side which I don't want so I don't want to see it on this side so again pull that nice and tight that would be why because we had a bit of a loop and then make sure I'm coming up properly on this side so I will scoot round the next, the remainder of this, this edge 
and this edge and halfway across this edge do not zip it all the way around because we need to stuff it so I will stitch this up and I will be right back okay so I have all stitched it all the way around and I've left myself a little little hole just here you can see the stitching just about on the back so now we're going to grab our fiber fill I'm just gonna stick my needle in there and we're gonna start start stuffing and it's literally a case of pick and push I've got little hands so I can probably get my hand right in here and this is where I get my hand stuck in the pillow and pop it and push it right into those corners at the bottom so that it looks nice and uniform oh, there we go and then in a push. Oh, let's get it into uh, this corner up here. You can get it into the corners and then stuff in the rest is is easy, but you do want your corners nicely stuffed. So here we go. Let's see. Beautiful. Now, to if you wanted to add some fragrance, essential oils to this, I would suggest you grab your. Oh, let's have a look. I've got a box full of essential oils <coughs> and some lovely melts that my my friend made me um, and take some of your fiber fill select your chosen fragrance let's go oh let's go lily of the valley now these are pure scented oils um, 100% pure fragrance oil. These particular ones are not essential oils. Can you focus, please? And this one's Lily of the Valley. We'll have some Lily of the Valley because that smells beautiful. Put that on the floor. And what I would do, or what I do do, do do do, is literally just a few drops, not don't saturate it because that would just be overpowering and quite vile so and then dab it in there and then I'm going to pop this right into the center or as near of the damn it and then squish it down and then that's that so that's our stuffing part done you can have a fiddle and a squish and make sure it's filled to your requirements then we take the needle once more make sure it's pull that down nice and tight I think that's that's good enough for me and then we you'd literally just continue and sew up that gap to the end so just so uh, stitch if you just check make sure so I could probably do with just a squidge more in there so before I've finished 
I can add that literally like so Put that right up there a little bit more it's amazing how much fiber fill you need actually perfect and then let's finish stitching this up as, as simple as uh, that and then when we get to the corner where we started Right, when we get up there, I will just do a back stitch and maybe another one. And let's do it three times because then we know it's not going to come apart just like that. knot it off now rather than cutting your thread take it back in through the hessian through your fiber fill and up and out give it a wobble a tug and then cut it and that way your thread's not going to go anywhere and let's give it a squish there we go now let's make these edges this bit's a little bit long on this side so i'm going to just trim this down of course if you want an extra long an extra long bit you may keep it as long as you like i think that looks pretty even just a fraction off this one it's going to get frayed anyway because now we just go into destruction mode and literally pull and pull and pull 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 and just pull oh, so satisfying there you go. now you can leave a little um, border on your cushion if you like I'm going to take another couple off Whoosh. and then do the same on this side just go around and pull your strings and obviously if they are too long when you're when you're done you can trim those this is super 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 simple there we go like that final side like that. let's have a look let's get these out of the way i don't throw these away by the way these will be kept in a little bag and they will be used in my journals so that can go up there now this is a bit long and hairy so I'm going to trim this down just like that again it doesn't have to be precise it's supposed to look old and loved which hopefully it will be anyway so let's see what we've got well I think that that's pretty cute so let's have a look for some embellishments what do we have well, on this one, I popped on another piece of hessian, a little bit of canvas, and then a knot of the yarn. Let's see what we could do with this one. We could go, oh, I know what I do have. I have some of 
this trim that would be nice could um, maybe on the diagonal or maybe just a piece maybe just a piece so let's have a, let's have a look cut this off now again we could fray the edges of this look cute to keep with our frayed edge theme let's see that would be quite sweet I think what I'm going to do is just fold this in half and then snip it like that like so that's cute and then what about a button maybe let's have a look in my little button box like little roses that's nice so that's nicer I think I've got a great big wooden one there but I think it's a little bit big for this particular oh, is it? or a butterfly oh a little butterfly might be sweet right we're going to use that little butterfly but I think we shall need something what else could we use just to give oh what about some of this trim? You snip. How about something like that? Let's let's go for that. So I'm going to layer these up and I am going to totally cheat and use some glue. So I'm gonna stick this little flower right on the end there Get that squish and then the same with our little butterfly this is just a little wooden butterfly button which I have no idea where I have got from that on there if these were like um, pillows for your head that you were going to rest your head on I certainly wouldn't uh, be using a button or anything like that but as these are just decorative and smell nice I think um, I think they're perfectly fine and I'm just going to whack a gloop of glue Ugh. on the back of there and I'm going to stick it at a jaunty angle give that a press yep there we have it another super cute little fragrance pillow that you could pop on your bed on your dressing table give us a gift i think they are really sweet and you could do exactly the same with your little squares which i think would look so adorable so there you go that is how to put one of these together you need one square a piece of hessian some sewing thread and you're done a little bit of fiber fill I hope this was helpful and uh, enables you to have a bash and create some little scented pillows of your own um, do let me know if you do um, comment down below on the video and um, don't forget to subscribe like 
the video and share it with your friends if you think there is someone out there that would love to make something with their woven squares and have run out of ideas maybe this little idea being as straightforward as it is might be something they would be interested in next video we'll be doing a bigger cushion where we'll be sewing multiple squares together um to make a pillow a proper pillow um and i've got lots of other ideas of things that you can do with your woven squares and they will all be coming up i will link the videos on how to do your basic squares um above so if you don't know you can pop over there and have a look at that um looms as always are available just drop me a message on instagram um that's the fiber factory uk i haven't got around to changing that to life lovecraft as of yet um and thank you all for being here i hope you enjoyed it i hope you do make some and please tag me on instagram if you do and let me have a look at what you make thank you for watching today and i'll see you soon bye bye for now